Good. Really impressed with my graphic skills. Very nice. Okay, so yesterday when I handed this out, I said you should get done with the starter question. And then if you could look through the section, look at the notes, kind of read through those. Um, see if you can kind of figure a couple of those out. Um, hyperbolas are the most complicated. They do have the most stuff going on with them. And they've got the most complicated definition. I'm going to show you generally how these things are formed. But this is what you should have done yesterday. Okay, what shape is this right here? It is an ellipse. Okay, you can tell because of the coefficients in front of the squared terms. Oh, Charles points out it says ellipse. That's not very difficult, is it? Okay, then we'd figure out where the center is. The center is at 1 comma negative 1. So 1 comma negative 1, we're right there. And then we're going to go 3 units in the x direction. 1, 2, 3. And we're going to go 3 units in the other x direction. And then 5 units in the y direction. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right there. Okay, and I said I like to draw a little box around here. It helps me draw something that looks less like a potato. So it looks something like that. And then the last thing we figure out is where the foci are. Um, big one minus the little one equals c squared. So that's going to be 16 equals c squared, so c equals 4. So that means I'd go up 4. Be right there for a focus. Go down four. Be right there for a focus. So there's a focus. There's a focus. There's the center. There's a vertex. And there's a vertex. Okay? Any questions there? Yeah? Uh, are the other two on the side of vertices too? You can call them vertices if you want. Some books do. Some books don't. Okay? I, I like to call them vertices, but it doesn't matter. Okay? So I think I think vertices. technically, if it says vertices it says on a, label the vertices, for I'll make sure we're clear on the test How about that. Okay. It would just be extra impressive if you labeled those. I'll do it all the time. Nice. See, that's that's what we're after. That's what we're after. Okay. So let's talk about a hyperbola. So here's the definition of a hyperbola. It's the set of points on a plane. Uh, where the difference of the differences from two fixed points is constant. Okay, the two fixed points again are called foci, just like they are on an on an ellipse. Okay, and let me show you um, an intuitive definition or an intuitive way of why these are formed the way they are. Okay, why these make this particular shape based on the definition. You can look at um, in the textbook. There's actually, they go through a big long proof of how you come up with the formula and stuff like that. I think it's much easier to look at it intuitively and then just figure out, okay, this, this is how we actually do these. So let's put a focus right here and a focus right here. And let's say that on this particular one, from here to here, let's say that is 10 units. And let's say that on this particular problem, I want the difference between a point on the hyperbola and these two points, we want the difference to be two units. So I've got to pick a point somewhere around here where the difference between the distance from my point and this focus and that focus is always two. So I'm going to call this focus one and that one focus two. And here's the first point I'm going to put down here. If the difference between the distances has to be 2, I'm going to put a, right, a point right here, and I'm going to make that distance 4 and that distance 6. If it's 6 from here to here and 4 from here to here, what's the difference between those distances? 2. Okay. So everybody agree that, that that point would be on our hyperbola if this were the difference between the distances, and that's how far apart the foci were. Good? Okay. Well, if that's the case, isn't there another one over here? Oops, I should have left that one. Isn't there another one over here where this distance would be 4 and this distance would be 6? Isn't there another point that fits that definition? Okay, all right. So I'm going to come back here. Now I'm going to use, let's say I make this distance a little longer. Let's say I make this from here to here, let's say that's 5. The difference has to be 2, right? So what does the other one have to be? 
the other one's got to be 7. So from here to here, it's got to be 7. Okay. Now, I tried to draw this roughly to scale. This looks That looks a little bit longer than this, and that looks a little bit longer than 4. Okay. Well, if there's a point up here that has a distance of 7 from this one over here and 5 from this one over here, isn't there another point right down here where we could draw that same picture? 5 here, 7 here. Is that okay? Let's say I make a distance of 8. So that's 8. How far would this have to be? That would have to be 10. Okay. Now, I th that's actually not too bad. I think that looks roughly to scale. Okay. And if there's a point up here, there'd have to be another point down here that fits that same type of picture there, where this is 8 and that distance from F1, from the first focus, is 10. Is that okay? So here are the points. This one, this one, this one, and this one, and this one. Okay. But if I did that over here, where this was 4 and this was 6, I could do the same thing on the other side. So I could draw another one over here where this distance is 5 and this distance is 7. So I'd have a point right there and then another one down there. And I could do another point up here where this distance is 8 and this distance is 10 and another one down here. So again, I'd have this point, this point, this point, this point, this point. Okay. So let me erase all of the mess here, and we're just going to keep the important stuff, which is the points that met the definition. Okay, did I tell you this was complicated? It's pretty hard to actually construct one of these, but what I want you to do is take a look at this. I've got this shape over here, and I've got this shape over here. Okay, now take my word for this. This is what would happen if we went out even further. Um, these points would get closer and closer together. They'd get closer to a straight line, and it would look something like this. That's the shape we'd get. Okay, And this one would kind of line up with this over here. And this branch, or this line, would line up over here. Okay, That's what a hyperbola looks like. Okay, and Very quickly, that's how the definition makes this shape. Okay? All right. In practice, it's actually pretty easy to graph these, especially if you've been paying attention and thinking about this stuff the way I asked you to. Okay? So, uh, let's see. We know from previous sections that a hyperbola has two squared variables that have different signs. Okay? And all the other uh, conic sections had graph-friendly forms that contained perfect... Square. So you've got to make perfect squares on this one just like you've got on the other ones. Okay, now this is one thing that makes these a little bit more complicated. Look what we've got to keep track of. A center, it has two branches, so there are actually two pieces of this conic section. Two foci, two vertices, and we're throwing in some more vocabulary here. A transverse axis, a conjugate axis, and something called a fundamental rectangle. And the last thing is they've got asymptotes. So we have a lot of things to keep track of. Okay, now, I pointed out yesterday when I, when I said, hey, just take a look at this, see if you can figure some of this stuff out. This is a gigantic box that contains all the details that we'd need to graph on this hyperbola. Okay? I'm going to do it this way because definition-wise, we're going to talk about all of these pieces, where they come from, and that sort of thing. And then I'm going to show you a quick way to do... Um, hyperbolas. So the first thing we want to notice is where would the center of this be? Okay, Just like all the others, if there's nothing with the y and nothing with the x, the center is going to be at 0, 0. Okay? So we'll put the center at 0, 0. And then just like we did if this were an ellipse, we look underneath the x. What's underneath the x? A 16. How far are we going to go in the x direction? 4. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4 right here. And one, two, three, four, right there. So we look at, at the number underneath the x squared term, take the square root, and we go that many directions in the or that many units in the x direction from the center. Always from the center. Okay, everything relates to the center here. Okay, then we're going to look underneath the y squared term, 
We're going to take the square root of that number and we're going to go that far in the y direction from the center again. So underneath the y is a 9. Square root of 9 is 3. So I'm going to go up 3 and I'm going to go down 3. Okay? What's it kind of like we're doing so far? Kind of like we're doing an ellipse. In fact, use the four points you just graphed to sketch the this is a fundamental rectangle. Okay? So when we were doing ellipses and I said I like to draw a little box around it, I didn't use that vocabulary, but that's what it is. This is a fundamental rectangle. Okay, so there's our fundamental rectangle. Okay, this part is important. The fundamental rectangle is not part of the hyperbola, but it does help us graph the correct shape. So the only reason it was there for an ellipse is to kind of help us keep inside the lines. The only reason it's there on a hyperbola is to help us make the right shape. Okay? Draw the diagonals of the rectangle using dotted lines and extend them beyond the corners of the rectangle. These are the, you want to take a guess? Nope. What were all those words here? Asymptotes. Okay, those are the asymptotes. So we're going to do this. Okay, now I like to kind of eyeball this and I kind of go out here and say, okay, I'm going to start my dotted line here. And notice that it goes right through the center. And then kind of eyeball it here, start out there, and we're just going to go like this. Okay. Haven't even started graphing the hyperbola yet. All of this is just prep work to help me get the right shape. Any questions? Okay, this next part is really important. Okay, the hyperbola opens in the direction of the positive variable. So, we're going to look at this. We're going to say, okay, the y squared is positive. That means it's going to open in the y direction. That means it's going to open up and down. Remember, there are two branches on each hyperbola. So, here's how we graph the hyperbola. Start on this asymptote right here. It's going to come down here. Everybody watch. It's going to come down here, and it's going to touch the fundamental rectangle right there, and then it's going to go back up. So that makes this a vertex. So we're going to run along here, hit this, curve back up, and then run along, and we're just going to hug along that uh, asymptote there. Same thing along here. Start along the asymptote. Hit that point on the fundamental rectangle. That's going to be a vertex, and then come down here. Okay, that is the hyperbola. That's the right shape. So at this point, we've graphed the hyperbola. We haven't labeled all of the important parts on the hyperbola. Okay? So the transverse axis always runs in the direction of the positive variable. So this is the transverse axis right here. So I'm going to make this a dotted line. Okay? It's called the transverse axis because it cuts across both branches. The vertices are always on the blank axis on the fundamental rectangle. They are always on the transverse axis. Okay, we already mentioned where you can find them. This is a vertex and this is a vertex. They're always on the transverse axis. Okay. Okay, the foci are C units from the center, also on the transverse axis. So this transverse axis is really important. You can find the center on it, you can find the vertices on it, and you can also find the foci. So there's going to be a focus up here and a focus down here. Now, listen very carefully. When we started conic sections, I said you can always find the foci inside the curved part of the conic section. Here's the curved part of the conic section. There's the focus on the inside. Here's the curved part of the conic section. There's a focus on the inside. Everybody good with that? Okay, now, listen very carefully. If you think about it this way, you don't have to remember or memorize the formulas as much because you'll just know how it works. Okay, when we did an ellipse, if this same graph or this same equation had a plus here, it would be an ellipse. Where would the foci be? On the inside of the rectangle or on the outside? They would be on the inside. And we did big one minus the small one, so we made sure we were inside the ellipse. Well, here's the cool part. 
it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay? It's just like the Pythagorean theorem. And the reason it's that way is because if we're going to have the foci outside that rectangle, we've got to add something to the big one in order to make sure that it's outside. Does that make sense? Okay. Minus made sure we were inside for an ellipse. Adding those two together makes sure we're outside of that fundamental rectangle for a hyperbola. Everybody good there? Okay, so on this problem, what's uh, C? It is. 16 plus 9 is equal to C squared. So that's 25 equals C squared. So C equals 5. So that means I'd go up 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right here, there's a focus. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right there, there's the other focus. Okay? So at this point, let's go ahead and kind of fine-tune this. Let's go ahead and label these points. So the focus would be at, I didn't go right or left, so that's a 0 comma something. How far did I go up from the center? Five. I went 5. So this would be 0 comma 5. That would make this one 0 comma negative 5. Remember the center was 0, 0. This vertex is 0 comma 3, and this vertex is 0 comma negative 3. We doing all right? Okay. Not too bad? It's kind of like an ellipse that opens out, right? All right. So the last thing we'd want to do here is we'd want to label the asymptotes. Now, here's what we could do. So don't write anything down. I just want you to watch. Okay. If you think about uh, point slope form, y minus y1 equals m x minus x1, all you need is a point on the graph and a slope, and you can figure out what the equation is. Well, if you'll notice that both of these lines, they both go through the center, right? So they both go through 0, 0. So I could put a 0 here and a 0 here. Okay, Or that might be the k and the h, if you want to think of it that way, because that's h and that's k. Okay, Now, we could look at this, and we could count, and we could say, okay, I need to figure out the rise and the run. So this is going to be a rise of... 3 and a run of 4. Is that right? No? Okay, remember this rectangle? How did we get to this rectangle? We started at the center and we went up the square root of 9, so we went up 3, and we went over square root of 16, so we went over 4. Okay, we could count here 1, 2, 3, back 1, 2, 3, 4. So down 3, back 4, that would be negative 4 over negative 3. Okay, Rise over the run. Is everybody okay with that? Okay, This one would be the exact opposite. Okay, Like exact opposite. Not reciprocal, exact opposite. Because this would be a rise of 3 and then back 4. So the slope of this one is negative, whoops, negative 3 fourths. The slope of this one is positive 3 fourths. Everybody okay with that? No? So the slope, the slope of the line, the slope of the asymptote. Oh, gotcha. Not, not the slope of this whole thing, just the slope of that line. We're just trying to come up with the equation for the asymptotes. Okay. So uh, the asymptotes tend to be what people struggle with the most. Okay. If you think about this, where did we get this number right here? How far up we go? From the nine, the number underneath the y. Now, if you learn slope like everybody else, you think of rise over run. Rise is up and down. Run is right and left. Which axis runs up and down? The y-axis. Which, which axis runs right and left? The x-axis. So the number underneath the y will tell us what the rise is. The number underneath the x will tell us what the run is. So remember we said this one was 3 fourths. Square root of 9 is 3. Put that on top. Square root of 9 is 4. Put that on the bottom. It's that simple. One of them's positive. One, of go one goes up from left to right. The other one goes down from left to right. Any questions? Yeah. Um, so the first line on the y-axis. Mm -hmm. yeah. Transverse axis. Yeah. Yep. Uh, it would be on the x-axis, and it wouldn't open up and down. It would open to the right and to the left. So I'd have a branch over here, and I'd have a branch over here. So it's always kind of like between like the line of symmetry with like 
Yeah, it's called trans. When you transverse something, you cut across it. So this cuts across both branches. Okay. Good there. Okay. Then let's come up with the equation. So here's what this says. Okay. Use point slope form. This will be really helpful. Okay. And all you need to do is y minus k, x minus h, and then you're going to put plus or minus the slope there. So we're going to write one equation that represents both, both uh, asymptotes. Okay. And the way we figure out what the slope is, is it's going to be plus or minus the rise over the run. Okay. And like we were just mentioning before, the rise is the square root of the number underneath which term? The y. And the run is the number underneath the x. Lots of stuff to keep track of. Any questions there? Okay. So you can remember all of this stuff, or you can think of it like this. Hyperbola is a graph just like ellipses, except for the, the branches open outside the box. Hyperbola is open in the direction of the which? Positive variable. We use a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We add the two numbers together that are in those denominators to make sure that our foci will be outside that box. Okay? And then we use the center of the box and the diagonals to help us graph the parabola and to write the equation for the asymptotes. So here's the cool part. Asymptotes are the hardest thing for people to understand. This is how easy they are. It should be y minus k, and then we'll need to figure out the slope, and it should be x minus h. Now, take a good look up here. h is always with the x. k is always with the y. Here's my y minus k right here. Here's the x minus h right here. So I'm going to write the equation for the asymptotes right now. We'll check it later. Y minus 1 equals, leave room for the slope, X plus 1. Now, the only thing I need to do is figure out what the slope is. Remember, it's going to be a rise over a run. Which variable would tell us the rise? The Y. Look underneath this. What's the square root of 9? 3. So I'm going to put a 3 up here. Which variable tells us the run? Four, or sorry, x. Underneath that is a 9. Take the square root. Thank you very much, Alex. Okay, so we have 3 fourths. What do I put in front of that so I count for the one that goes up from left to right and the one that goes down from left to right? Just a plus or minus. Those are the asymptotes. It's that simple. You grab this expression right here, y minus 1, put it right there. This expression right here, x plus 1, put it right here. And then all you have to do is figure out the slope. Number underneath the x, Square root, that's the, the run. Number underneath the y, square root, that's the rise. Put a plus or minus, you're done. To find the asymptotes? Yeah, now we're going to graph this. Graphing is the easy part. The asymptote is the tough part. Graphing is the easy part for everybody but Alex. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at this. First of all, where is the center? What is it again, Alex? Uh, uh, sorry. Caitlin? Negative 1, 1. So it's at negative 1, 1. So back 1 and up 1. There's the center. How far do I go in, which does this tell me? In, yep, I go 1, 2, 3. There's an end point. 1, 2, 3. There's an end point. And then in the x direction, I go 1, 2, 3, 4. So we're right here. 1, 2, 3, 4. So we're right here. And then I draw this rectangle. Have we drawn the graph at all yet? Nope. Okay. I then draw the asymptotes. Again, since asymptotes are the hardest for most people, everybody watch, please. Both of these go through this point right here. 
So they both go through negative 1, comma 1. So that's our H, that's our K. So if we did point slope form, Y minus Y1 equals MX minus X1. This is the H. This would be X minus minus 1. This would be plus 1. And this would be Y minus 1. And then all I need is the slope. Let's count to figure out the slope. You just counted off to make the fundamental rectangle. How far did you go up here? 3. How far did you go over here? 4. So this would be 3 over 4. Put a plus or minus, you're done. Is that not the same thing we got by just looking at the thing and saying, okay, it's just that expression right here, that expression right here. Square root of 9 is 3. That goes on the top. Square root of 16, that goes on the bottom. It's the same thing, isn't it? Okay, we got the hard part figured out. Okay, now we have to go through and let's graph the hyperbola. Does this open up and down or right and left? And how do you tell? Okay, why is it up and down, Emily? Because the Y is positive. In fact, this is the same graph as we just did except for what's been done to it. It's been moved to the right, or excuse me, to the left one and up one. So we'll just run along here. Kind of straight, and then we'll curve it a little bit. We're going to hit that point right there. Go up like this. Draw this branch. Hit that point right there. Go like this. Wow, that's bad. I've already got the asymptote. There's a vertex, there's a vertex, there's the center. Let's figure out what those are. Again, the center was negative 1, 1. How far did I go up? I went up 3, so that means the x-coordinate stays the same because all I did was go up, so that's going to put me at 4. And I went down 3, so that's going to put me at negative 2. What else do we need to label here? The two foci. How do we figure out how far the foci are from the center? Okay, a squared plus b squared. So again, it's going to be 16 plus 9. That's going to be 25. That's c squared, so that means c is equal to 5. So I'm going to go up 5, put a point right there. There's a focus. Down 5, put a point right there. There's a focus. What do all of these have in common? The x-coordinate, okay? They all have negative 1 for an x-coordinate, okay? And I went up 5 from there, so that's going to put me at, help me out, 6, negative 1, comma 6. I went down 5, so that's going to put me at negative 1, comma negative 4, okay? All right. If you can do that on the test, you're in great shape. Okay. What axis is this that cuts across here? Transverse axis. Okay, is the fundamental rectangle part of the hyperbola? Nope, it just helps us graph the right shape. Okay, are the asymptotes part of the hyperbola? Nope, it just helps us graph the right shape. Okay, so if you could think of this as an ellipse that opens outward, and the way you tell which direction it opens, because you've got some choices right and left, up and down, is the positive one, and then the way we find the foci are add the a squared and the b squared together so you're sure that it's outside that rectangle. And then if you can remember how to come up with the equations for the asymptotes, you've pretty much got them figured out. Okay, are there any questions there? Yes, yeah. The asymptotes are an important part, and they asked that on nearly all of the ones on the assignment. Okay? All right, so let's take a look at this one right here. We'll do a couple of these, and then we'll mop this up tomorrow. Um, we'll do lots of examples. Um, they're really not that bad once you get them figured out. Okay, um, you can tell this is an ellipse, or sorry, a hyperbola because it's got two squared variables, and they have this one's positive, this one's negative. Okay, listen very carefully. The X is positive. That means it opens in which direction? The X direction. So that means we're going to have a branch opening to the right and a branch opening to the left. Where's the center? Center's at 0, 0. 
Okay, do yourself a favor right now. In your head, just say, well, that's going to be y equals plus or minus m times x. Because remember, it's y minus k plus or minus m times x minus h. There's no x or h, or there's zero on this one. Okay, so zero is our center. In the x direction, I go one, two, three. One, two, three. In the y direction, I go two. Draw the asymptotes. And the cool thing is if your asymptotes don't look, look perfect, but you label them correctly, you still get credit for it. Okay. I like figuring out the equation for the asymptotes before I draw all the rest of this on here. So because this was a plain old x and a plain old y, it's going to be y equals, uh-oh, going to be y equals something times x, plus or minus some number times x. What's the rise? Two. two. What's the run? Three. The rise is two because the number underneath y is four. Square root of four is two. The number underneath the x gives us the run. Square root of nine is three. There is, those are the equations for the asymptotes. Okay, let's go ahead and draw the hyperbola now. Remember we said because x squared is positive, it opens in the x direction. We're going to run along this asymptote. We're going to hit this point right here. So it's going to go like this. Run along there, curve around really quickly, and then run along this asymptote right there. Run along this asymptote, so very straight, and then it's going to curve around like this and look like that. There's the hyperbola. Okay, These two points right here, these big red dots, they have a name. What are they called? That's a vertex, and that's a vertex. This is the center. So the center is easy enough to do, and the vertices are easy enough to do. They're all on the x-axis, so they all have a y-coordinate of 0. We went forward 3, so that's going to be positive 3. This is going to be minus 3. And what else do I need to draw on this? The foci. Add these together. C is equal to the square root of 13. So I'm going to go forward the square root of 13. Now let's see, 13, that's going to be somewhere in between 3 and 4. So it's actually pretty darn close here. There's a focus. And there's a focus. Which coordinate do we know on these? Zero for the y. And how I went forward, radical 13, and I went back, radical 13. Okay. Any questions? Easy enough? Okay. What is the difference between... Example A and example B. Okay, Y and X are switched. Okay, is everything switched? Okay, this is still, underneath the X is a 9. We're still going to go 3 units in the X direction. Underneath the Y is a 4. We're still going to go 2 in each Y direction. And the center is still 0, 0. So we're going to go up 2 over 3. So it looks like this. There are the asymptotes. Y equals a number times X. That number is square root of the number underneath the Y is a 2. Square root of the number underneath the X is a 3. So there are the equations of the asymptotes. Really, what's the only difference between the two of these? Which variable squared? Graphing, it's the same approach. All of that stuff is the same. The big difference here is on this one, the y is positive, so that means we open up and down. So we've got this. Coming down here, touching that point, going like that. Same thing down here. 
How far is it to a focus? Same thing, square root of 13, so it's in between 3 and 4. So there's a focus, and there's a focus. And we could label the vertex, or vertices, and the center. So if this were a test question, this is what I'd want to see. I'd want to see all five of those. I'd want to see the equations for the asymptote. I'd want to see dotted lines for the fundamental rectangle and the asymptotes and all that sort of stuff. Centers at 0, 0. 0, 2, and 0, 2. And then we went up radical 13, and we went down radical 13. Any questions? Easy enough? Okay, hopefully so. Okay, we're going to pick up uh, on this tomorrow. Here's what I would like you to do. I would like you to graph C before you come to class. Have it completely labeled. If you know how to do that when you walk into class tomorrow, it's going to be a lot easier to put them in graph-friendly form and graph them. And they're going to describe information about these. They're going to say things like, hey, I've got a center here, a vertex here, and a focus here. What's my equation? Okay, have a great day.